RPAS version 16 has some new and exciting features and benefits. In this video, we are going to further discuss these features and benefits, as well as show some of them in the MFP environment as an example. The RPAS platform is highly scalable, stable, and secure, and has been demonstrated by over 100 functioning customers worldwide. The Oracle Cloud service ensures continuous technical support by taking charge of installation, server configuration and management, software and hardware upgrades, as well as backup and disaster recovery. Integration is easy and seamless with predefined integration points between different modules. Best practice templates are highly configurable to fit each retailer's needs. These guidelines and workflow templates allow the planning process to be efficient and streamlined by providing top-down targets and bottom-up planning functionality for developing, reconciling, and approving plans. These best practice templates aid in the workflow process to guide each user through the necessary steps in logical order. Exception-based management allows measures to be flagged when set parameters are met. In the example on the screen, if the BOP drops below $2,000, the cell is highlighted in red. Let's look at the system and see how this works. We will go to the Format menu at the top and select Exceptions. Once on the Exceptions tab, you can choose any measure you'd like. Here, we will pick Working Plan BOP Retail and Working Plan EOP Retail. Then you'll choose your conditions. Ours will be any value less than or equal to $2,000. Then you'll choose what it looks like if these conditions are met. Here, we'll have the cell backfilled in red. Now you can see that at the end of October, and then in November, December, and January, we will not have enough inventory to cover sales. Again, these exceptions are highly configurable and can highlight anything based on your inputs. There is some newness regarding currency, languages, and VAT planning included in version 16. Plans can be created, reviewed, and approved in multiple currencies and languages. For VAT planning, when sales costs are planned, the VAT percent rate is applied to calculate gross sales, and then returns are subtracted to calculate net sales. If no VAT percent rate is planned, then the net sales are simply determined as gross sales less returns. In this system, both VAT setup and currency options are under the MFP maintenance tasks. In the system, we can see that you can set up VAT by any date hierarchy combination you'd like. Here, we will change the VAT percent for next year in the coffee class to 21%. This will change all the subclasses in coffee to 21% as well. You can change the VAT percent at any level. If you'd like to change the VAT percent for the entire company at once, simply enter the percent at the company total and it will replicate to all lower levels. Previously, when a new administrator was added to RPAS, they got full permissions to workbook templates or measures. However, when a non-admin user was added, they did not get any permissions to workbook templates or measures. The permissions were then added one by one manually. In this new enhancement, the default access rights can be set at user group level and the new user can inherit rights from their group. Here we can see that from the administration tab, we can select add user. We then name this user, identify them as a non-admin user, and allow them to inherit the default rights of that group. This saves you from the tedious process of setting specific permissions for each user. Now let's take a look at how multi-level display measures work. If a measure has been set up to be a multi-level display measure, you will be able to edit above, at, and below the base intersection. Here we have a sales measure set up as a non-multi-level measure and one as a multi-level measure side by side so we can see the difference. For the multi-level display measure, the base intersection is department, which is men's footwear, and then we have class, casual, and the subclasses, loafers and boots. If we change a value at an aggregate level for the non-multi-level display measure, it will spread the number to the below cells and total it above. If we edit below the base intersection of the multi-level measure, the value is replicated 
to the base intersection and all the levels below. Levels above the base are aggregated according to the predefined aggregation method. Now let's see what it looks like when we enter data above the base intersection. In the non-multi-level display measure, we will enter 600 at the group level. You can see it spreads this out to all the levels below it. Now if we enter the same number above the base in the multi-level display sales measure, it spreads proportionately to the base level first, then replicates it to all the levels below. This can be very helpful because information from multiple levels can be displayed and edited within a single view. Quickborn's highly experienced merchandising solution, consulting, and service practice provides implementation, integration, and support services for Oracle Retail Merchandising Operations Management Solution.